So uh, yet another video on uh, kind of how do we deal with strain gauges uh, and basically how do we measure kind of mechanical properties of materials, i.e. stress and strain, um, when we're using kind of this Wheatstone bridge and uh, kind of configuration. So today we're going to talk about kind of a new problem we haven't really done yet, which is using um, strain rosettes. So we talked about that uh, rosettes. We talked about that a lot, uh, quite a bit in the previous video, um, at least theoretically. So now we're going to actually work with them today. So um, this problem, we're dealing again with kind of this uh, blood vessels. Um, there's a kind of really unique uh, kind of uh, basically a protein or polymer called the von Willebrand factor. It's really important in kind of clotting. Um, my PhD advisor, um, Alfred Alexander Katz, you should read some of the articles that he, uh, he kind of studied this material and figured out um, how this uh, basically it trans, uh, transitions from this glob globular state to a uh, kind of extended. So polymers can exist in kind of this coiled globular state. As your when your blood vessels cut, this polymer extends, opens up binding sites, and it binds and clots uh, your kind of material here. Um, if you have this disease, it's hard to kind of clot. Um, even more interesting, um, these kind of binding sites here are actually extremely, extremely weak, but very, very fast. So that was kind of a really fascinating, and um, because you'd think that you'd have to have a really strong binder in order to kind of clot in this, you know, high blood pressure and the kind of you know, this kind of flow environment that's really intense. But uh, anyways, that's beyond the <laughs> scope of that today. So what we're kind of uh, doing today is we put uh, basically a strain rosette, a delta strain rosette, basically at this location of the clot. And we figured out that we had these uh, kind of strains measured. So we need to figure out and calculate the principal stress state uh, and then figure out if the clot will burst if the stress exceeds 45 kilopascal. So we're dealing with the delta rosette. So we know that we have an arm A in this direction, and then 60 degrees from A, we have arm B, and then arm C. Again, not to scale, but kind of same idea. So this is, the whole angle is 120 right there. So that's our delta rosette. So you can go through, um, just like what we did in class, and kind of look at these, you know, kind of big equations, but I would suggest not to do that. Instead, let's solve it. Uh, kind of using our Mohr circle, and now we're going to deal with strain space. So we are measuring strains. This is our shear strains over here. So we have at E sub A, we're at minus 380 microstrain. Uh, at B, we are at 472. And at C, we are at 650. So we know that at some point, there's a some center of our circle. And it's going to have to kind of intersect uh, these kind of points here. It's going to have to intersect, again, it's a horrible circle, but it's going to have to intersect somewhere here. So we need to figure out, and, you know, basically let's imagine if our center is, you know, here magically. Um, it's going to have to kind of intersect here, and then also it's going to have to intersect, you know, again, there, there. You know, it's going to intersect these kind of points on our circle. We need to kind of figure out where these are. So how can we figure this out? Well, we need to figure out three variables. We need to figure out where's the center of our circle, what's the radius, and what is our theta. Because once we have those, then we can figure out the rotation required to get to our principal strain state, which would be lying flat here, and we'd calculate kind of the largest value here and the smallest value here. But anyways, uh, to do that, we also need to know what is this angle to theta rotation. So we have these three variables that we need to solve for. So we need three equations. Now. How can I rewrite, we know that this uh, location here, E sub A, so we know that E sub A, if we just do some geometry here, how can I figure out where this point is E sub A from the center of our circle? Well, E sub A is just going to be, so if I start out at the center of my circle, if I do some geometry here, so I know that this is my radius, because uh, again, starting from the center, going here, if I want to figure out this distance here in terms of trig, what is that going to be? It's just going to be the center. So this location here, E sub A, to figure out what that point is, it's just going to be the center plus R cosine 2 theta. That's it. So that is E sub A. We already have this value here. How then will we uh, figure out, you know, this point uh, E sub B? Well, it's going to be a, a very similar expression, right? So it's going to be E sub B. Let me kind of clean this up here a little bit. Give me some more room. E sub B is going to be the same thing, center plus R cosine 2 theta. But what is the rotation 
to go from here to here. It is going to be, again, we're going to rotate all the way here. This is the in the clockwise direction, so that's negative. So the difference between or the distance between arm A and arm B is 60 degrees, but we're in two theta space, so it'd be minus 120. And E sub C, sorry, it's going to be the same thing, except now what's our angle of rotation? It's our cosine two theta plus 240. Because again, two theta space right here. Excuse me. Let me clean this up a little bit. Not enough room in my. <laughs> so our epsilon. Oops, let me go here. So our epsilon sub c is going to be c plus r cosine of two theta plus two forty. That's it. Oh, three equations, three unknowns. Let's figure out what is c, r, and theta. So I'm going to flip Attica and let's define some values right here. Uh, so I know that. Ea is going to be equal to minus 3. I'm just going to define these real quick, then we can kind of zoom in on our Mathematica notebook. E sub b is going to be 472 times 10 to the minus 6. Always want to have in e sub c is going to be equal to 650 times 10 to the minus 6. Excellent. Ooh, minus 6. That would have been bad. So we've got our values defined in here. We know our equations that we need to solve. So we know that Ea is equal to C uh, plus R times cosine of theta. We could do that uh, here. E sub B is equal to C plus R times cosine of theta plus that 120 degree rotation. And E sub C is equal to C, actually uh, minus because again, we're going to say the clockwise direction, uh, it's, you'll see it's not going to matter too much. Cosine, cosine of 2 times theta, or 2, oh, good thing that, ooh, almost forgot that, 2 theta, 2 theta, 2 times theta, minus 240 degree. So those are three equations. What are our unknowns? Center, radius, theta. Let's figure them out. Let's look at these numerically. And there's our answer. So this is our center. So C equals this. Our radius is going to be positive here. So that is going to be my R equals this. Place that in there. So let's define that. So I know then, looking back at my uh, basically more circle and strain space, if I want to figure out what is my principal radii, it is just going to be the center plus the radius, uh, and then the center minus the radius. So my E sub 1, my principal strain, uh, my principal strain in the one direction is going to be C plus R. My E sub 2 is going to be strain or uh, center minus R. There we go. Now, let's look at what is our angle that's going to give us our principal strain state. So let's look over here. So that theta value. So let's figure this out right here. And then let's get it in values of um, 1 degrees, 180 divided by pi. And that's going to be the rotation. So 4.65 degrees. Uh, Again, you could figure out clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on where you're going uh, in this kind of strain, uh, this more circle space. That's it. So there it is. <laughs> so uh, we figured out C, we figured out R. Now it's asking us, what's the principal stress state? So we figure out the principal strain state, E sub 1, E sub 2. Again, you could use these kind of nasty equations to double check, but we know the expressions for, if I want to figure out, if I want to solve, I know that E sub 1, if we're in a, you know, again, when you put a strain gauge on, you're in kind of a, basically a 2D plane st uh, stress state. So we know that E sub 1 is going to equal to, uh, in this material, let's see, we are working with a uh, biomaterial. So I'm just going to say that my Young's modulus uh, Y is equal to 1 times 10 to the 9th. Oops, excuse me. So one gigapascal is my Young's modulus. My new is going to be 0.4 for biopolymers or for polymers and biomaterials. So 
my screen in the one direction, or the principal direction is just going to be sig one minus new times sig two. There's no sig three. We're in plain. Uh, we're in just two D. Let's solve it here. I know e sub two set it equal to one over y times sig two minus new times sig one, and close it. I want to solve for sig one, sig two. There it is. That's my expression. So 866,000 uh, gigapascal, or sorry, not gigapascals, pascals, that is going to be, uh, oops, all the way down now, unfortunately. That is going to be greater than 45 kilopascals, right? So the clot's going to burst, unfortunately. Now, the experimentalist wants to ensure the accuracy results and place rectangular rosette on the clot as well so that the element, the element was offset by 10 degrees counterclockwise. What should the strain uh, rosette readouts be for the rectangular rosette? We can have a scenario like this. So we already know a string gauge delta rosette. It's kind of set up like this. Again, not to scale. So 60 degrees difference between A, B, C, and then that 120 angle. And we had kind of this expression that E sub A is equal to C plus R cosine of 2 theta. That's it. B was C plus R cosine 2 theta plus 120, or minus, excuse me, because we're going, um, if we're going the kind of clockwise direction. Or, so. And E sub C, C plus R cosine of 2 theta minus 240. So now, in this problem, we have a rectangular rosette. So let me get my, I'm going to change my color. Let's do a nice little cyan color. No Bob Ross, but... <laughs> so it is offset now by 10 degrees counterclockwise. So we are counterclockwise in, that, in this direction. So we are going to be offset here by this 10 degrees in this direction. So this is going to be our A. This is going to be my B. A prime, B prime, and C prime here. So... Uh, Let's figure out, we need to uh, figure out my, what is my strain in the A prime, what is my strain in the B prime, what is my strain in the C prime. Now, we're still measuring the same stress state. So, C, R, and theta are still constant. So, if our, if our angle between A prime and A were zero, we would have this same answer, right? We would measure E sub A. But it's offset here, so we're going to have to include this offset in this expression right here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So if I'm right here, my EA prime is going to be equal to C plus R times cosine of basically 2 theta, 2 theta, and then it'll be clockwise, so plus basically 20, again, 10 degrees in real space, so it's going to be 20 degrees in 2 theta space. Now, if I'm doing E sub A prime or E sub B prime, what is the strain that I'm measuring here? Well, again, we're just going to propagate. So what's the angle between A prime and B sub prime? Oops. Let me get that out of the way. Expand that. What is the angle between here and here? It's just 45 degrees. So all that uh, is going to happen there, I'm just going to propagate that. So C plus R times cosine of 2 theta. What is kind of the rotation of the direction uh, is we're going in here? We are still going kind of, if we're set up in this direction, it's clockwise. So it is going to be, or actually, yeah, excuse me, counterclockwise. So the angle here that we're rotating is going to be, we're going to add on that 45, so that's 90. So plus, plus that initial 20 degrees. So that is going to be plus 110. And again, it depends on kind of where you're kind of rotating and where you're kind of starting from here. So you could kind of say that's this kind of, you know, counterclockwise rotation, but it's just keeping your keeping your rotation consistent. And E sub C, we know that angle between A and C is going to be that initial, again, uh, right here, C plus R cosine 2 theta. Now, 20 plus this whole degree is 90, so 180, so it's going to be plus, because this angle between A prime and here, that's a 90 degree, so in 2 theta space, that's the 90 degree rotation, so in real space, again, we need to, uh, actually in real space, the theta is 90, so we need to multiply that 180 plus that 20, 
to be 200 degrees. And that's it. So, you know C, you know R, you know theta, plug and chug, and that's it. You're done with this problem. Again, assuming that you're kind of working in this kind of, uh, you know, strain space or, you know, rotation space where you're kind of, again, doing this kind of consistent clockwise rotation. Um, but yeah, or counterclockwise rotation. So notice the positive again, because we are rotating counter, you know, counterclockwise, we're measuring the strain this way. Again, it could be flipped, but just keep this notation consistent. Positives and two thetas, that's it. You're ready to go. You can kind of plug and chug in for the answer if you'd like. So let's look at our mathematic real quick. So our C's remain constant, so C plus R times cosine of 2 times theta, which I have to find up there, as you can see, plus 20 degree, this. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and just change some of these values. 110. And finally, right here, 200. That's it. Plug and chug. You're ready to go. Thanks. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.